of Labor Day. So, work on Labor Day. No, I don't know. Don't work on Labor Day, I guess. Isn't that ironic? You don't work on Labor Day. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is what it is. All right. So uh, that's kind of nice. It's, it's kind of nice, but it's going to have the effect of getting me confused about my Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday classes. At least it's two weeks in. It's usually one weekend. And then I really get confused. All right. I mentioned there's a chapter in a book about text formatting. All right. Read that on your own. All right. Text formatting, and I'll probably do a couple small examples of it, but I'm not going to go through all the stuff that's in there because I don't really have anything to add to it. You know, I mean, the book covers it. Read it. Bring questions that you have to class and start using these tags in your assignments. Um, let me bring down the bunny example from last time and we can talk a little bit about text formatting and then we can go on to what's going to be a lot more fun than text formatting. And that is um, the basics and the beginning of CSS. Keep in mind, it's fun by my definition of fun. Your definition of fun may vary. But I think everyone would agree that it's more fun than text formatting. This, by the way, is a great example of what we're going to learn not to do in a few minutes here. And that is, see that blue dot? What does that blue dot mean? That means that I have incoming messages. How many incoming messages do I have? Gee, it would be great if it wasn't a black number on a blue dot. If maybe it was a white number on a blue dot or a black number on a yellow dot, or whatever. So we're going to learn about CSS, but we're going to learn um, also to have the sensitivity to not just know how to do things technically, but to do things that make sense, and to do things that help the user figure stuff out instead of, you know. I mean, I, I'm literally like this, and if I like maybe stick my face up against a monitor, I can see that I have five incoming messages. But I shouldn't have to work that hard, right? It's not that I can't do it, all right? It's that, you know, my job entails so much more than looking at my Canvas screen, right? So I should be able to get the information I want from the Canvas screen correctly. That's my little pet peeve of the day. That's what I should have. I should have the pet peeve of the day. All right. Anyhow, let me bring down the, the bunny example from last time. Last, uh, on Monday of this week, I let them out to play, the two bunnies. And I, until approximately, I let them out to play approximately four o'clock. I started to try to corral them at about five o'clock. The big rabbit I got pretty quickly because the big rabbit is giant. There's a lot to grab onto and it doesn't move as fast as the little rabbit. The little rabbit, I've never seen anything move that fast in my life. It, it was literally like if, 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 the, if the rabbit was here it was literally like the rabbit disappeared, and then I saw it again across the room. I, I like didn't even see it move. It was like a cartoon or something. And I never felt more like Elmer Fudd in my life. I should have one of those hats and, and all that. But anyhow, um, I digress. So let's look at this. Text formatting would involve something like this. If I wanted to emphasize words, if there were words that were important,
Or maybe I would want to emphasize like the scientific words. Rabbits are small mammals in the family of Latin word of the order, another Latin word, formed in several parts of the world. Those words are special, right? They're different than the ordinary words in the rest of the sentence. So maybe I want to emphasize them, all right? So what I can do is I can go in and I can tag those words to tell the browser that these aren't just ordinary words, these are, these are special words. So I could go and I could tag them. To tag that a word is to be emphasized, you use the M tag. So that's the word that I want to emphasize. So I start my M tag. I then close the M tag. And I could do it for this one as well. If I use an M tag, by default, the words are put in italics. All right? So that way they're emphasized. You see words that are in italics that you, you know visually that there's something different about those words. Question? What's the difference between using the emphasize and then just using the I as an I tag? That's a really good question. Um, the difference is, is it's a matter of the, uh, the italics tag is about appearance. The emphasis tag is about meaning. In other words, by default, things that you emphasize are put in italics. So to answer your question, um, there'll be no obvious effect. This is one of those small points that people can spend hours debating about what the correct way to do. I use the M because that conveys a meaning. In other words, these words are special, and therefore I want to emphasize them. I don't merely want to put them in italics for the fun of it, all right? Now, let's think of it. When we learn CSS in, oh, five minutes here, we can represent, emphasize things a bunch of different ways, not just with italics. By default, the browser default is to make emphasize things in italics. But I could override that default and say, emphasize things, I want to be a different color emphasize things I want to be larger, emphasize things I want to be a different font altogether, all right? And therefore, it seems to me in most cases to make more sense to use emphasize because then I can choose how it goes. Remember, the way your page looks, and, and this is one of my like catchphrases, you know, um, that I'll say probably every class from here on in, the way your page looks depends on the defaults of the browser plus the CSS code that you write. So by default, this is how the browser treats emphasize, but we can override that via CSS. If there was a particular word that I would want to strongly emphasize, like maybe I want to emphasize endangered species, I can put the strong tag. And that strongly emphasizes it. That means that it's really, really important. All right? And by default, the browser will make that bold. Now, there's something different about these tags than any tag that we have seen so far. All right. I, I'm pretty sure I'd, I'd have to, no. Um, OK, this isn't 100% true. The link tags are also like this. These are inline tags. In other words, notice how the UL, the LI, the nav, the article, the H1, the paragraph, 
all stack things on different lines. All right. So I have an H1, then I have a UL. They're not side by side. They're stacked on top of each other. All right. Likewise with the H1, the paragraph, and so on down the line. Those are known as block tags because they get stacked just like a bunch of blocks would get stacked. All right, one on top of the other. Again, by default. All right. I, you know, whenever I talk about the appearance or the layout or something, if I say this is how it happens, uh, and I'm not talking about CSS, I mean this is how it happens by default. All right, because we can change that as well. The M tag and the strong tag are inline tags. In other words, they just appear in the flow of the paragraph or whatever, and they do not cause there to be a new line. All right, so they're not put on a line by themselves. All right. So notice that this emphasized word here doesn't appear on its own line. It just appears in the middle of the paragraph. So those are called inline tags. There's block tags that stack where each one's on a new line, and then there's inline tags that are not on a new line. All right? A t we haven't really seen an example of this, but A tags are also um, inline tags. So, for example, if I wanted to make a link for this, I want to make a link to a page about that particular kind of rabbit. I could go in and say a, right, because it's a link. href, because I have to say what it's a link to. In the quotes, I paste the URL, and that URL needs the HTTP the colon, the slashes, and the full address. I then put between the start and end a tag the text I want to become the link, right? What is it that I want to click on to go to that page? All right? So in this case, I want to click the word a mommy rabbit. All right? And then when I do that, if I refresh the page, now that is a link. And I can go to that page. But if you notice, this is also an inline tag, right? The link isn't on its own line. The examples I gave so far, the link was on its own line, but that's just a coincidence. That's just because they were surrounded by other block tags, all right? So they look like they were on their own line. All right. There's a lot of other text formatting things that you can do to, like, put captions on a picture when we talk about pictures. Well, to do, like, a block quote. What's a block quote? It's like when you write a paper and you don't just quote like a, a sentence, you quote like three or four sentences. You can actually indent that a little bit. And that's called a block quote. All right. So for example, I could say, Mike Zeller said, And I could put my block quote here, where I am quoting a person, and I'm indicating that it's a quote by putting it in a block quote. And it's meant to be a block quote because it's going to be not just like a few words, but it's going to be like a few sentences. Flemish giants are easy to catch because they are big and slow 
like me. Um, they grow to be up to 30 to 40 pounds. My cat is afraid of it, and so on. The idea here is it's not just like a word or two, but it's like several sentences, all right? And that's a block quote. So if we look here in the browser, how black quote gets displayed. It's a little hard to see, but it got indented a little bit. All right. If I had like a, a bunch more text, you you could you you'd be able to see um, that. All right, a little better. All right. There's a bunch of other stuff about text formatting. Again, for not talking about text formatting, I sure spent a lot of time not talking about it, right? I spent about 10 minutes not talking about text formatting. But um, you can read the other stuff uh, in the book. All right? Now on to the fun stuff, on the CSS. CSS allows us to take the defaults and change them, to make the defaults work the way we want them to, or, 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 or to change the defaults to work the way that we want the page to look, all right? And the first example I'm going to do, I'm going to deal with changing the color of the page, all right? Literally, ev everything that relates to the appearance or the layout of the page we can control via CSS. So, one of the first skills that I want you to distinguish is understanding if you want to do something, is it a matter of changing the CSS or the HTML? So if I want to add a paragraph, that's adding content to the site. Content is HTML. If I say I want the paragraph to be a bigger font, well, bigger font, that's not content. That's the way the content looks. Therefore, that would be CSS. Um, I want to add an image to the page uh, of, of a rabbit, let's say, in this case. Well, that's content, that, so that would probably be an uh, um, HTML. Whereas, um, I want the page to be green instead of white, well, that's appearance. All right. So, over time, when you ask yourself the question, like if there's something you want to do, think, am I adding some content to the page, or am I just changing the way the page looks? And once you decide that, then that makes it easier to figure it out. All right? Then, like once you decide, well, gee, changing the style of font is a CSS thing, well, then you know where to start looking up when you do your research if you can't remember how to change the font. You know? So, again, that's sort of the first sort of skill, if you will, that, that you need to have as far as this goes. The style code can be put in several different places. And we're going to start out by putting the style code, the CSS code. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. These are actually a carryover from the old days of like magazine editing where they had style sheets about like how a page should appear in a magazine, you know, um, and so on. But the word we're going to focus on is, uh, now is style, all right? And, you know, you hear style, you think of appearance, all right? But, really, it goes beyond appearance, and it goes to increasing the functionality of the website. So we do things not just to make it look better, but to make it more effective in communicating its message. All right? Just like, you know, I don't know, you can think of, you know, items of clothing, you know. Um, let me think of an example of an item of clothing. Um, You know, a, 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 a jacket that someone riding a motorcycle might wear. All right. Now, to be sure, 
you know, those have been stylish for ages, you know, probably ever since the 50s. You know, that was considered to be a very stylish, good-looking thing to wear. That being said, they actually serve a functional purpose as well. They protect the rider somewhat. I mean, some of them have like, um, I forget what the stuff is called, but like to shield them if they were in an accident to help protect them. Kevlar, right, there you go. Or like a helmet, you know. You could, you've seen some really cool looking helmets, either for, ba for, for cycle, b bicycling or motorcycling or whatever, and you say, wow, those are stylish. But the style, in part, is there to make it more functional as well. Not necessarily the paint, but the way it's designed and, and things of that nature. So when we talk about style, we've got to remember that we're not just talking about the superficiality of the way it looks. We're talking about making it more effective. So, for example, we're going to add color to this page. All right, we're going to make the page a different color. Well, we could do that to make the page look better, right? I mean, colorful things generally look better than just plain black and white some of the times, especially if everything is black and white. Like if we look at this page, every single thing is black and white with the exception of the blue links. So by adding a little bit of color there, we make it more visually interesting. All right? We make it more attractive. We make it more visually interesting. And that's a good thing. What else does color provide to a website? What would be other reasons other than just making it look nice to adding color to a web page? guide what's most important, all right? To emphasize things, all right? To show that things are different, to show that things are the same. For example, color and the underline is used here to show the user that that is a link, all right? Now, we didn't do anything to, to get that. That's a default behavior of links. But still, if this was just plain black text, with no underline, we wouldn't know that that was a link necessarily. All right. However, different color gives us a visual cue, and the underline gives us a visual cue. So we can do we can add color to the page to make it look better, but we can add color to the page to emphasize things. All right to help the user organize the page into sections. All right. We can do it, use it to create a mood. All right. Um, you know, a kid's site, a site for children, is apt to be very colorful. You know, if you see a real colorful site, you know, you might think, well, that's probably a site that, that's, that is dealing with kids. Um, if your bank, however, had like 15 different pastel shades of colors on it, that wouldn't create a very professional looking mood when you saw the page. All right? And therefore, serious pages should look pretty serious. You know? Let's look at a couple of pages and see how the color scheme sort of promotes a mood. You know, let's go, first of all, to the Wall Street Journal. For the most part, black and white. What does a black and white color suggest or evoke in the eyes of the viewer. No nonsense, no thrills, just the facts for those of you that remember the TV show Dragnet with Joe Friday. All right. I probably need to update my references because probably no one's ever seen that show. Oh, you have? Okay, good, good. Serious. It looks like a newspaper. Right? Well, gee, that's what the Wall Street Journal is. That's how it started. It was a non-print newspaper. 
What is a different color on this page? The yeah. ad. All right. And you hate it already, exactly. Here's a little bit of different color. Well, why is there color used here? Well, again, it would be really hard to read this graph if, if all three of them were like black and white, right? Or even shades of gray. It would be really confusing to look at it. So they use color to make that graph more readable. They use color at a couple places just to emphasize, you know, what's new 25 minutes ago. Splashes of color here and there, but for the most part, pretty much black and white. There's one interesting thing that you have to see all the way up to the top. In the top hand right corner, there's the only, almost the only color that there is. It's 50 knowledge and 50 Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Also, I thought you were going to mention this. The stock price is here. The green arrow indicates good, the red arrow indicates, the, or the green arrow indicates price going up, the red arrow indicates price going down. So it gives you a visual cue. All right. Now let's go to another site. Go to site for Barbie dolls. Don't, okay, I, cl I close it out. Before we do this, what color do you think it's going to be? It's going to be pink, exactly. Or purple, right. Let's see if we're right. Oh, looky there. It's both. Barbie News. All right. Now, could you imagine either way? All right. Could you imagine the Wall Street Journal site looking like this? Or could you imagine the Barbie site looking like the Wall Street Journal? No. All right. It's not just a matter of appearance, it's a matter of sort of like, I guess I'm using the word mood or setting the tone of the site or something along those lines. All right. So fun sites ought to look fun and serious sites ought to look serious. But you know what? There's exceptions to that. All right. There's exceptions to that. One thing that we'll learn about design is, is that we can make some general statements that are true most of the time. Like if you don't have a better idea and you're working on a serious site, make it look serious. Or if you're working on a fun site, make it look fun. But there's exceptions to every rule. Can anyone think of a fun site that looks serious? There's one that instantly pops in my mind when I think of this question. I won't pull it up because sometimes their humor is a little um, not necessarily appropriate. But I'm thinking of the site The Onion. The Onion is a satirical website that parodies newspapers and parodies news coverage. But they use fake articles that are funny. All right. Part of the joke is that it looks like a real newspaper. All right. The thing I would say with that is if you're going to do that, be real sure that your audience knows that you're not being serious. All right. In fact, there's been occasions where I'm sure every one of you have gotten emails from a friend talking about an article from The Onion as though it was serious. And then you feel like, you know, like you, you realize this is a joke, right? You know, and then there's awkward silence between the two of you and, and so on. Okay. My point is, is that with every aspect of web design, there is, or, or with every um, topic in web design, there's always a technical component, and then there's a design component. 
The technical component is like, how do I do this? How do I make my web page pink? How do I make the font different? How do I do this? The design part is, should I make my web page pink? Should I be using different fonts? How should I be using color effectively on my page? And so on. So you got to keep like both sides balanced, right? Most websites I see that are bad are not bad necessarily because the person creating them were technically incompetent. In other words, they knew their HTML tags for the most part, all right? And they may even know CSS very well. What they don't know is how to put it together in a way that helps convey the message. So as we go through this, keep in mind that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should, all right? And we are going to learn CSS that will allow you to make every sing single thing on your page look different. That doesn't mean that you ought to make every single thing on your page look completely different. All right, use discretion, emphasize things. If I say everything is important, then nothing becomes important. If I use color to emphasize the important things on the page and everything's a different color, then it's not clear what is being emphasized. If, like in the Wall Street Journal's case, most everything is black and white, but I have that little thing in blue that says 15 weeks or $15 or whatever it said, that stands out. If, like, half the stuff on the page was blue and half of it was black, then the, the blue stuff or the black stuff wouldn't, wouldn't stand out. All right, so consider the design part as well as the technical part. So let's look about creating some style for this page. We can put the style code in several places. One of them is we can put it in the head section of our HTML document. When we do that, we use a style tag. And the style tag tells the browser, hey, the stuff between here and here is an HTML, but it's CSS code. OK? So here to here, that's CSS land. It's not HTML land. So we're not going to put CSS, I mean, I'm sorry, we're not going to put HTML code in there. We're going to put CSS code. CSS code is a group of style rules. All right? Style rules have two pieces in them. All right? Style rules, first of all, have what is called a selector. The selector says what gets this style rule. The second part of the style rule is a list of attributes and values. In other words, what it is that we want to change about the selected items. Let me give you an example. Body background yellow. Keep in mind for some examples I'm going to pick colors that are just like obvious, right? So we don't have to like sit and strain and try to decide. So I'm not necessarily picking colors that I would actually use, all right? But I'm using colors that are going to be obvious and, and visual. Are any of you colorblind in this class, by the way? You are? Oh, what kind of colorblindness do you have? Um, the Blue, purple, red, green. Okay. All right. Uh, let me know if anything we do is difficult for you to see. All right. All right. And, and when we talk about accessibility, we can talk about some of the things that you can do to help people that are colorblind. For example, we've already seen an example of that. Our links were blue and what else? Underlined. So people that can't see the fact that that text is blue they can see the fact that it's underlined. So they may not get the message by the color, but they might get the message by the fact that it's underlined, that it's a link. All right, 
So what does this mean? The body says, this is what gets this style rule. Well, what's the body? Well, the body is like the whole page, the whole window. So this is going to make the whole window look differently. Everything in that window. So everything Everything in this window is going to look different once I save it. Now, inside these curly brackets, or braces sometimes they're called, is going to be a list of attributes, and there'll be a colon, then a value, and then a semicolon. This is the thing that we want to change. This is what we want to change it to. All right, so I want to change the background color from the default, current default is white, I want to change it to be yellow. All right, so if I save this and click refresh, the page is now yellow. Yay. All right. So I can use background to change the color of the background of the page. I can also use background dash color, and we'll talk about the difference between the two later on. I could also change the color of the font if I want. All right. So. Let's change the color of the font, and that's the color attribute, to blue. All right? So notice how this style rule works. And again, I can put as much white space as I want to here. It's sort of a good practice to put them on separate lines, and you can see everything. But the background of the page, I'm changing to yellow. The semicolon separates it from the next thing the color of the, page, uh, of the page, and by color I mean the color of the text, is going to be blue. And there we go. Now, you might wonder, is that a good idea? Because now the text is blue and the links are also blue. But again, just to demonstrate. All right. I could make the color white if I wanted to. Well, the problem with that is it might not be very easy to read. All right. We're back to what they did in Canvas that I showed you, where you have black type on a blue background. and it's kind of hard to read. Maybe I will email a link to this lecture to the folks at Design Canvas and tell them, at about the 40 minute mark into the lecture, please pay attention. All right. But again, I can make it colors that make sense. Now, by no means are colors the only thing that I can change. Colors are a good place to start because, for the most part, they're pretty easy for people to see, again, with the exception of colorblind people. All right? And again, colorblindness doesn't mean that you see in black and white. All right? Colorblindness means that certain colors are harder for you to distinguish. All right? and Therefore, by using certain color combinations, you can make it harder to read. All right. Let's go and let's put another selector, another style rule. 
I'm going to say H1 Let's do this. Let's make this blue again. H1, and I'm going to say background. Um, pink. What do you suppose this is going to do to the page? All right, it's going to make, the whole page is going to be yellow. The background is going to be yellow. The text is going to be blue on the whole page. H1s, however, are going to have a background of pink. So again, the selector says what gets the rule. So this isn't going to be pink because that's not an H1. But this will be pink because it is an H1. What color do you think the words are going to be within the H1? I have a couple votes for black. Blue. We have a vote for blue. Let's find out. All right. There we can see the H1s are indeed pink. And what color? They are blue. Why is that? Well, this comes to the cascading part of cascading style sheets, right? You can think of like the style sheet like trickling down to lower and lower levels, all right? So in this case, I said everything on the page has a yellow background and has blue for the text color. H1s, I say, has a background of pink. So the more specific a rule is, it's going to overrule a more general rule. So the body covers everything. The H1 covers specifically this one tag and the other H1 tags on the page. So the background rule for an H1 is going to overrule the body's background color for all H1s. So that's why, again, it's a more specific thing. I said I, the, whole body, the whole body of the page gets this color, H1s get this color. So that overrules. However, I did not define a text color for it. So what color does it get? Well, the H1s are still part of the body, right? So it gets the text color from this rule. So that's the cascading part. In other words, a particular element on the page can get its appearance from a combination of rules. And the way those combination of rules work is the more specific overrules the less specific. So the rule that I place on an H1 overrules on a body, uh, the, the, the rule that I place on the body. Questions about this? I'm just going to go and throw some colors out here just to show how selecting works. All right. I could say border background, or I could say footer. Let me say color red. All right. How is that going to look? Well, here's a footer way down here. All right. I haven't specified a background color for it. The footer is not part of an H1, so it won't get this one. The footer is part of the body, therefore the background of the footer should be yellow. What color should the text be? Well, the text is going to be red. And that's mostly true, except for one little teeny part.
for reasons I don't want to talk about right this moment, I'm going to use the Chrome browser. There we go. This machine runs an old, 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 old version of Internet Explorer. So therefore, I have problems when I use certain HTML5 tags. So the text is, in fact, red, except for the link. All right? Links, again, are, are a little different. All right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We could make a different color for the links. Or we can make a different background color for the links. So everything we're learning here about background and color, we could apply to anything on here. We could make the ULs a different color. We could make the LIs a different color. Any of the H1s or H2s or paragraphs or anything like that. And more than color, we could change the font. We could change the border. We could put a border around it. We could change the width of it. We can change any visual aspect of it that we want. All right. Now, important thing I want you to realize, and I had a student send me an email about this, is there are ways through HTML that you can change the appearance of the page. Don't use those. Anything dealing with the appearance we're going to do via CSS. Why? Well, we'll find out, but by keeping those things separate, it makes it much more easier to change the way your site looks. One of our next steps is going to be to take that style code and put it in its own file. All right? Then we can have a bunch of pages all using the same style file. And that will allow us to have all our pages have a consistent look, which seems like a good design practice, right? Instead of having pages that look wildly different, to have all your pages look about the same. All right? We'll pick up on this next time. And we'll also pick up on, like, gee, let's maybe pick some real colors that, like, look good together instead of these um, dramatic colors which uh, are, are simply there to illustrate the point. Any questions? Um, are you going to show based on how to use shades of colors? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, again, um, I pick those because those are like the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. But um, we'll go over like how you can get any shade of color that you want. We'll go over how you can look it up like on a color chart. And we'll also go over a little bit about the science of making colors that go well together. All right? Because, again, there's some people that do a great job at that, you know. You see someone has a great outfit that looks great together. And then you see someone like me, like, did he get dressed in the dark? All right? Fortunately, it's not just a matter of taste. There's science to what colors go together. And therefore, for those of us that don't have that innate awareness of what colors go together, we can always look it up, all right, and, and say, I want to make my site green. What are a couple of shades of green that complement each other instead of clash with each other? And we'll review that as well. We won't review the science so much as we'll review sort of the conclusions that science comes to about that. All right. We'll see you in lab.